Welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gisela Kay, and in this video, I'm going to provide what I've done many times before throughout the studying of this case of Madeline Soto, and I'm going to provide you with a raw audio file of the police interview conducted with Jen Soto on April 18th of 2024. Now, if you're wondering why my demeanor is this way, I'm like, so, I'm so angry about this. I'm so devastated for Madeline Soto. She did not have a protective mother. It's hard to even call Jen Soto a mother. It just is. Like, if you hear this, it is so frustrating. So if you've never heard it before, then you'll hear it here without any commentary. Of course, if you want to hear my commentary and what the community had to say, I've linked the live stream in the description box for you, as well as in the pinned comments. So join us over there. Make sure that you are subscribed as well with all your notifications on so you can join us at the next live stream. I love to talk about these cases with you to see what you guys pick up, you know, what you think about things. And thankfully, we don't have to go through this alone because it's so devastating to think about the abuse that Maddie suffered for so many years based on evidence found on Stefan Stones' phone. He's facing the death penalty. My goodness. So he's been charged with Madeline Soto's murder. He's also been charged with over 60 counts of CSAM charges. And it doesn't seem like Jen Soto will ever be held accountable. I always say never say never, but it just does sound like she has immunity. It seems like that's why the police are saying they have no plans to arrest her. And that's devastating in itself. Okay, so I don't want to talk too much. I just want to get to the audio for you. Please come and join us in the next live stream. Let me know what you think and please comment below. I want to hear your thoughts. What did you pick up? Where did you pick up any more inconsistencies? I have to say more because there's already been so many. Is there anything that stood out to you? Let me know. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like, and share. Good morning. We are at the state attorney's office in Kissimmee. It's 8.57 a.m. It is April 18th, 2024. I am William Jay. I am the division chief for the homicide unit. With me is Danielle Pinnell, also from the homicide unit in Kissimmee. Can the detectives identify themselves? Detective Mark Morris. Detective Kyle Smallwood. And with us is... Jennifer Soto. With your attorney... Matthews Bark. All right. We went over some things before we went on the record and told you, you had the opportunity to ask any questions that you needed to ask. Um, if you need a break to consult with your attorney, that is absolutely fine. We'll all step out of the room, turn off our recorders, and let you exercise your constitutional right to have counsel. There's no problem with that. There's water fountains here. There's restrooms. I don't know if you're a smoker or not, but like if you get desperate, we can make an outside break time, but we are kind of under time constraints. Um, with that all said, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. This is an investigative subpoena, so you've been compelled to be here. And in our country, under the Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment, as applied to you under the Florida uh, Constitution as well, you cannot be forced to incriminate yourself. So anything you say today can't and won't be used against you unless you just don't tell us the truth. And I've already explained to your attorney, Mr. Bark, whether or not you've made any inconsistent statements in the past, that, that is dirt under the bridge. And either a misdemeanor was committed or it wasn't. But we're not going to be using that as, as a basis of some sort of perjury by false statements. Because those other charges wouldn't be perjury anyways. Um, so the most important thing today is to tell the truth. I also explained derivative use immunity, which means if you said that there was a gun, and obviously there's no gun in this case, buried in your attorney's yard, we couldn't go dig up that gun if you told us that, oh yeah, there was the, the gun that was used is right there. We wouldn't be able to do that. We would have to show that we learned all those things independently from this interview. Okay? Do you have any questions? Yeah. All right, so let's get started. But before you start, let me just make sure we're clear on the record. I had, off the record, we had discussed our position on the concerns we have. Minnesota was interrogated by law enforcement previously. Um, 
she was under a tremendous amount of duress and stress being that her child was missing and then she was informed was found deceased. Um, there's been media hysteria about this. There's been people asking for her to be prosecuted, tarred, feathered, executed. Um, and so with that said, we have the concern that you brought up about um, if there's something said inconsistent today, not being used against her for filing a false police report. Um, right, so for example, if she said something that was false then, and we have no idea that it was false now before this interview, but she comes in and admits that it was false today, we can't use these statements or that admission that it was false against her just like we couldn't use anything else against her um, from this interview. Okay. Okay. All right. My understanding is that on February 25th of this year, you were working at uh, the hotel at, um, on Disney property out at Coronado Springs. Yes. You know, yes, answer. Out loud and loud enough to get caught on the report. I know you're upset. I know. Yes. All right. And did you get off at 10 p.m.? Yes. All right. Did you go directly home? Yes. About how long does it take you to get home? About 25 to 30 minutes. And when you get home, who is downstairs, if anybody? You have a two-story, is it a townhome? Is that the best word for it? Yes, it's a townhome. If anybody is downstairs, who is downstairs? I saw my daughter Madeline and uh, Stefan. Do you recall what Madeline was wearing? And do you recall what Stefan was wearing? I can't tell you. Okay. When you get home from work, do you need to kind of eat a late dinner before you get settled in for bed? Yes. And do you eat there at your home? Yes. What do you eat? I think I had a, a pub sub waiting for me in the house, a sandwich. Okay. Did anybody join you in sitting down and eating? No, I ate in my bedroom. Okay. Did it look like anybody else had recently cooked food or eaten any food there that night? Uh, from what I saw, no, I, no. I didn't see anyone cooking, or it didn't look like anyone had been cooking. Okay. Um, I believe in one of your former interviews, you mentioned that Madeline might have gone over with you kind of what she got at the birthday party since you didn't have the chance to go because you were at work. Mm -hmm. When and where does that occur? That occurs right after I get home. It occurs in my bedroom. Everyone's in my room. Um, and so by everyone, let's just be clear since I understand you have some roommates. So what do you mean by everyone? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Madeline, Stefan, and myself were in my bedroom. Okay. At this point in time, do you recall what Madeline was wearing? I, I don't know. Let me ask it a different way. Can you tell me whether or not she was wearing a long-sleeved green sweatshirt and jeans? Oh, no. Okay. Would she have kind of been in her bed gear, or do you think she could have still been in the dress that she wore to her birthday celebration? She would have been in pajamas. I can't recall the exact pajamas, but she would have been in pajamas. Um, she, she had already, by this point in the evening, she had already showered and changed out of that birthday dress. And was it your understanding from your sister that she had gotten dropped off about 8.30, she being Madeline? 8.30, 8.45, something around that time, yeah. And what's your understanding as to when Stefan had gotten there? If you know, if you don't, don't guess, it's fine. Actually, while he's saying that this is important, so there's things that you might think should be a certain way, because of, that's just the way things go. Um, but don't just guess based on past history that mm -hmm. it's the same as what happened on that particular day. If you don't know, you don't know. Then, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what time he, he got there. Okay. You were at work, so I just didn't know if, like, Sometimes families check in, hey, I made it by text or by phone call or anything like that. You, do you not remember any of that? I don't remember. Okay. How long were the three of you in your bedroom? 
I'm going to say for about 30 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. And did Madeline tell you about the party? No, she was did, really happy. Did she tell you what uh, food they had there at the party? Or? Yeah, she, um, they had her favorites. What are her favorites? Um, Puerto Rican food. So, arroz con gandules. All right, so you're gonna have to translate to English. <laughs> I know frioles and arroz and a couple other things, but help me out. Um, if I recall correctly, she had requested rice. It's, it's a type of rice and beans. Mm -hmm. It's rice with pigeon peas. Okay. Uh, and benil, which is I'm not sure how to. It's a it's a pork, but I'm not sure how they cook it. Okay. Um, so it's cooked pork. Um, that's typically what she requests for her parties. That's like her favorite meal. Okay. And what kind of gifts did she get? She got a lot of money. Okay. That's what she ended up showing me. I think she had a few trinkets, but like most of it was just a big wad of money that she was so excited for. All right. Um, is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't uh, make it up to the party? Because it's my understanding he didn't exactly work or anything. Um. He wouldn't have been invited. Um, the party was held at my mom's house, and my mom and him have never had a great relationship. She's never liked him. So he wouldn't have been invited to the party at all. It just would have been my whole family, and then me. If I hadn't worked, I would have been there. Okay. Now, during this 30 minutes that the three of you are in your bedroom, is Madeline engaging in any of her kind of nighttime routine or, you know, getting ready for bed? What else is going on, if anything? Um, we spent a long, a long time talking about gifts and having her show me, and then we counted out her money. Um, I can't remember if she had finished with all of her bedtime routine. Okay. Does she brush her teeth at night? Uh, in the shower. In the shower? Okay. Uh -huh. And that occurred before you got home? Yeah. And my understanding with her nighttime medication is that's that's something that you would like to make sure she had a bedtime or so? Something like that, yeah. So were you present for that occurring or did that occur after you got home? <clears throat> that that did not occur on my call. Um, I believe I had instructed Maddie when she got home to go ahead and take them herself. Okay, and is that something that she's allowed to do? Um, from time to time, yeah. When you um, say they, is there, what, my understanding was there was some hydroxazine, is there anything else she takes at night? Just hydroxazine. All right, and the Miralax is when? Miralax is... So that would have been earlier while you were at work too, if she took it? Yeah. May not have, because she was at the party? Yeah, because she's been, because I had been training at work that week and we had been going back and forth with my mom's a lot, the Miralax wasn't consistent. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, Madeline, does she lay out her clothes for school the next day or is that something she gets in the morning, makes a game time decision like my kid? Typically, it is a game time decision morning of. Okay. What about this specific evening? Do you remember anything about it? Yes. This evening, we had... Um, I had already discussed prior to Stefan coming to visit that he was going to help me take Maddie to school that day. Um, so because I knew that that was what was going to happen that night, I had asked Maddie, pick out your clothes, have everything ready, have your backpack ready, your water bottle, everything you need ready so that that way you could just grab your stuff and head out. It won't be too much, too much of a hassle in the morning. Um, and so she did. She picked up her clothing. I asked her what she was wearing, and she told, she told me what she, what she had picked out. I said, okay, fine. All right, so she picks it out, but, but does she physically take it out of somewhere, wherever she stores her clothes, and put it somewhere? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm so, not sure if she took that clothes upstairs with her or anything like that. All right. So as far, you didn't see them in your room, and did you have the opportunity to kind of see her cubby part of the living room to see if she had put them in, on her bed or anything like that? Does Madeline um, have like a water bottle or a hydro flask or whatever the kids call it that she likes to sleep with and bring bring up bring up or bring wherever she's sleeping? Mm, 
probably not. That stays downstairs in her backpack, and then she'll clean it in the morning and then fill it back up and just leave it in her backpack. That typically stays in the backpack. Okay. Favorite stuffed animal or stuffed animals? Anything that always goes with her wherever she's sleeping? Uh, she does have a few stuffies and blankies. Um, did I see any that day? Yeah, specifically, did you see if she brought any of that stuff upstairs with her? Um, no, I didn't see any of that stuff upstairs. Now, separate question. Generally, habitually, like your attorney was saying, there's a difference between specific memory. But generally, would she do that? Not saying that you saw it that night. Generally, would she do what? Bring Have stuffies and blankets and her favorite stuff. Uh, yes, uh, she typically would. So if Stefan says something like Maddie's building her nest and getting settled in, would that to you mean like her stuff is part of his nest? Or what do you think that would mean if you know? Okay. Do you recall getting that text from Stefan that night that Maddie had settled into her nest for the night? I don't remember that text now. Okay. My understanding was that at some point you told them it was time to go to bed. Yeah. Do you recall about what time that was? Around 11 o'clock. So that's consistent with getting home at 1030, having this half hour discussion and eating your pub sub? Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do they comply with your wishes to go upstairs when you say that at about 11 o'clock? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. Um, Is there any further communication between either you and Madeline or you and Stefan about, all right, kids, it's time to go to bed, anything like that? Or was that the last you had heard from either one of them that night? I think at some point Stefan comes downstairs to use the restroom and then goes back upstairs but I don't after that I don't recall interacting or saying anything so okay and my understanding is that you had some sort of parental controls over Maddie's phone is that accurate by parental controls exactly. I, I didn't have any limits or anything on the phone set up. Well, like, for instance, if she wanted to install Game Pigeon, does that uh, have to go through you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any permissions for any apps, she would have to ask me for. All right, and does that ring a bell as to occurring that Sunday? Game Pigeon? I don't remember. Okay. All right. So that's, a, that's <coughs> the last time you hear from either one of them until the morning, my understanding is that Stefan comes down and is dealing with your dog. Is yeah. there, so is there any communication other than perhaps Stefan coming down to use the restroom? Um, is there any other communication that you have between Stefan and Maddie? <coughs> do you see them? Now, I've, I've said communicate. Do you see them? Do you go up and check on them? Do you, do you see Madeline or Stefan from the point you kick them out at 11 p.m.? until you see Stefan at, at 8 in the morning-ish is what you guess for the dog. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't see them. Okay. Now, when you go to sleep, do you sleep through the night, or do you kind of <coughs> yeah, wake up and not have consistent good sleep? I sleep through the night. Okay. So there wouldn't be any points in time where you get up and you're taking steps or just checking on your phone because you can't go back to sleep, as far as you remember? When you go to sleep, you're out until the dog thing in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Did you hear or see anything during those hours um, involving Stefan or, or Madeline? I didn't hear or see anything that night. Okay. All right. What's the first thing you remember when you wake up after having gone to sleep? I wake up to Stefan trying to put the leash on the dog. Okay. Now, is this the first time that you've ever woken up to Stefan trying to put a leash on your dog, or is that something that has occurred before in the past? I'm going to say this is the first time. Um, it's not normal for any of us to put the leash on the dog on the bed, because if he's on top of any like bed, couch, anything, he'll pee. He gets really nervous. You have to do it on the floor. So I found it really weird that he did that, but... All right, so let me ask it a little more broadly. Is this the first time Stefan's ever come into your room while you're sleeping to take the dog out for you in the morning? Um, I can't recall if he's done before. Okay. 
did you find it unusual then, or what did you think when this is occurring? When it happened, I think I was more... Uh, I found it off, but I was more worried over the dog. I was like, please don't pee on the bed. I don't want to do laundry. Okay. Um, so I was more anxious over that. Um, he put the dog on the leash and told me to lay down and go back to sleep. And okay. I said, okay. So were you not laying down when he tells you to go back and lay down? No. When when he got when he put the leash on the dog, I shot up off the bed because I was going to help him. I was like, no, no, let me do it. And he's like, no, no, go back to sleep. I'm fine. I got this. Okay. I said, okay. Now, do you go back to sleep or do you check your phone or do anything? I think I go back to sleep. I can't look at anything. In this period of time that you have been awoken by Stefan, do you hear or see anybody else in your household? I hear somebody in the kitchen. Um, I'm not sure who it was. I'm not sure who it was. Okay. Could you identify it by size, like their steps? Could you identify gender by their voice? Anything like that? Well, All I heard was sounds of like cabinets shutting, like somebody in there shutting, like looking for something and shutting. Okay. Um, now, if your daughter had been awake, would she come in and say goodbye to you before school or not, just let you sleep? She would have come by and say <laughs> goodbye to me. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the first times that Stefan actually took her to school, so I I would have hoped she would have said good goodnight, but I'm not sure. All right. So, do you fall back asleep? I do. And when do you wake up? And how do you wake up? I wake up at like. Nine o'clock in the morning uh, to my alarm. Um, yeah, I wake up at nine o'clock in the morning to my alarm. Uh, I get ready, I think, at around 9.30, 9.45, I leave for my doctor's appointment. Okay. So in this period of time from when you're waking up and getting ready, do you see anybody else in your home? At this point, I'm not too sure. I know throughout the day I've seen my roommate in the kitchen cooking and doing her thing, but I don't recall if I, it was at this time. <clears throat> Did you see your daughter this morning on the 26th? No. Did you have any texts or phone calls or any other type of communication through any possible app uh, on your phone? Like, hey mom, love you at school, whatever. Any communications from Madeline? Anything from her? Nothing. All right. How about from Stefan, by the time that you wake up at 9, any texts or communication from him? Maddie's dropped, I'm off to the game store, or whatever he's doing? No. Um, I didn't hear back from Stefan until 10, like 10, 20-ish. And he had told me he left his phone at home that whole morning by accident. And I had asked him how the morning went, how was Maddie, and he let me know that this morning went great, we made great time, she got busy super quick, uh, he was going to take her to McDonald's for breakfast, but she changed her mind, all she wanted to do was sleep in the car, so he let her sleep. He took her to school and dropped her off, or he said he dropped her off, and that, that was it. And you had a 10-15 appointment for a blood draw? Yes. And did you go anywhere else prior to getting to your appointment for your blood draw? Did you go directly there or not directly there? That's basically the question. Oh, I went directly there. All right. And after your blood draw, did you go directly back home? Yes. About what time did you get home? Sometime between 11.15 and 11.30. Did you have any other appointments or doctor's appointments later in the day? 
I was supposed to have had one, but I canceled it. When did you cancel it? That same day. Why did you cancel it? Because it was a $350 Botox appointment that I didn't want to spend the money on. I, I changed my mind last second. When you get home from your blood draw appointment, is there anybody else at your home? Um, when I get home from blood draw, yes, uh, Stefan was home. All right, and can you describe what he's wearing, what he's doing, his demeanor, what's going on? what he's wearing. It might be a red shirt with a graphic on it. Okay. He's sitting in my bedroom on my desk. Prior to you getting there, he's in your room? Or is that where you guys go to talk? That He was hanging out there in my room. Okay. Um, my room is kind of like the general hangout spot. Okay. Um, I walk into my room. He's sitting there on the computer chair. Um, He's talking, acting normal, uh, asking about the morning and how everything went, and that he let me know the errands that he ran that morning or what he was up to. And what did he say he was up to? He said he had dropped Maddie off at school and then afterwards went to a vape shop so he can buy vaping things. Okay. But that the store wasn't open, so he waited a long time for them to open. They never did. So he drove around, killed time, and then eventually made it back to my house at like 10.20. Um, when later on, while he was, when I got home and he was home, we started discussing, um, or he started telling me that he was going to go back out to run a few more errands in a little bit down 182. And he gave me the name of a few stores that he might stop at. And I'm like, okay. Um, I asked him if he wanted to meet me at my house by 2.30 so that we can go pick up Maddie from school together. And he said, yeah, uh, he'll, he'll be back by 2.30. And I said, okay. So was that the plan to get her together or was it ever discussed that he would get her alone? The plan was for, for us to get her together. Okay. All right. And so does he leave before you leave? Uh, actually, before this, while we were still discussing, while we were having the conversation on the in my room, he did mention at one point, oh, uh, while he was sitting there, that he had to reboot his phone, or that he had to update his phone. Mm -hmm. um, and what was it? He had to update his phone, so I said, I told him. Stop avoiding it, do it. Like, it's a update to take a while, like, do it. And while he was updating his phone, he said, I don't know what I did, but I just uh, factory reset my phone. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's weird. I didn't know that you could do that. He said, yeah, a button popped up and I pressed it and it just reset my entire phone. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Um, so what, does he leave before you do to go do these errands he was telling you about? Yes, he does. Uh, do you stay at home until it's time to go get Madeline? Yes. Do you hear uh, anything from Stefan while he's out doing these errands? Uh, no. So, 2.30 rolls around. Is Stefan back home yet? No. At this point, I leave. Do you call, try and call him or text him or communicate with him? Yeah, I had been calling him, like, maybe starting... 15 minutes before I was supposed to leave just to see where he was. Did he answer? No. Um, I leave at 2.30. Around 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from him. And he said, I'm so sorry. I left my phone at home again on accident. Um, I was driving down 192 and my tire exploded or shredded and I had to pull over into one of the plazas and change my tire. Um, I hurt, he said he hurt his thumb doing that. Okay. And that, um, yeah, he was late and didn't make it back on time for that reason. All right. When you leave to go pick Madeline up at 
do you take her phone with you? I do. And how is it that you come to get her phone to go with you? Um, at some point in the morning, I was organizing and putting things away, and I walked into her bedroom, and I saw her phone on her dresser. And I just assumed, oh, she must have left it here while getting dressed and forgot it. Okay. Was it on? Yes. And sometimes when you bump or move phones, the notification screen comes up. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to do that, and did you see if there was any incoming notifications that she had missed? All right, so you go to school, and due to time constraints, like an NFL football game, we're going to kind of jump ahead a little bit. My understanding is that you want to be first in line, mm -hmm. and you have to get there early to do that, and I understand that. Yeah. She, <laughs> does, she doesn't come out. She doesn't know. Did you call her phone? I did. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because I forgot I had had it with me. I was like, where is she? Why isn't she out yet? So I start calling her phone. And then I start realizing I'm hearing vibrating, and then I look down and I see her phone's with me. I'm like, oh, okay. how am I gonna get a hold of her? Because I'm the first in line. The cars behind me already have children. They're full. They're waiting for me to leave. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna kind of jump ahead. Did Madeline ever complain to you about believing that Stefan had taken her Christmas money? Yes. Tell me about that. Christmas money went missing, and we were both, um, it, I was, I, I don't even know how to explain this. We had collected all of her envelopes with Christmas money and consolidated it into one. I'll put all her money into one. Yep. And then I said, I will put this somewhere safe, and I thought I had put it in my nightstand. A few days later comes Ryan, comes around, whatever. Um, we start looking for it or asking for it or something like that, and we can't find it. We can't find it at all. Um, so let me just narrow it down. Did she accuse Stefan of taking it? I'm not sure if she did directly. Okay. I, we, we, we both had the suspicion, but we're like, no, could he have? No, I don't think so. But I eventually found that money. Okay, I was just going to have the mystery end. All right. So you had just started this job at Disney Coronado Springs like a week or two earlier, is that right? Yes. And your sister and other family members would help with Maddie getting to school because of your job? Uh, yes, my mom. My mom and my sister, yes. Okay. Why is it that now Stefan on February 26th is coming up to help as opposed to any of your family members helping getting Madeline to school? Uh... I had asked for him to come and help me because I think I was working a lot of night, uh, night shifts or like really late shifts and um, I just wanted the opportunity to see Maddie like because I, I wanted to spend more time with my daughter throughout the week while I was working uh, versus had she had stayed at my mom's I wouldn't have seen her all week. Okay. Um, so that was just me wanting to see her and spend time with her. Did Madeline, Madeline stay at your mom's house fairly frequently? Every few weekends here and there, like just for the weekend kind of thing. So like if she described it to her friends as like her second home and like kind of offer up it's better, better jacuzzi and pool, does that sound like that's the place? Yes. Where does Madeline sleep when she's over at your mom's? She will sleep in bed with my mom. Okay. Did she ever have sleepovers? Like, have friends come over and sleep over? Slumber parties, no. Did she ever go and attend any? No. Is there any particular reason? I mean, she's a 12-year-old girl on the cusp of being 13. Yeah, I, I've i been very uncomfortable with sleepovers just because I know what can happen. Anything can happen in a sleepover. Well, then you can be the host house like we kind of were. You never hosted any sleepovers for her friends? For her friends, no. Did she ask about it? Yeah, she did ask. Was it probably a source of contention or arguments? Uh, it was, I guess what was the source of argument was her and she wanted to really sleep over her best friend's house and I, was just, I just kept saying, no, 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 you never know what could happen. I don't know the dad, I don't know the brother, I don't know anybody there. Like, I, I don't know what could happen to you. So, um, 
just afraid of her getting assaulted. Okay. Um, did Madeline do her own laundry? Yeah. Did she cook for herself? I was teaching her how to make a few things, so I mean, yeah, she could, I guess. Okay. What's her normal routine for getting ready for bed? give her her medication. Um, she would get in the shower. Uh, Take a long shower, I, I understand? Like an hour plus, yeah. Okay. Um, and she loved it. Um, she'd get out, uh, she'd get dressed, she'd let her hair towel dry for a while, and then she would brush it. We would watch some TV. She'd probably have a snack. Bed as well. Okay. What what were kind of her nighttime uniforms? I mean, everybody kind of has their pajamas, but they're not necessarily pajamas. What was her routine night wear? Uh, she really liked wearing uh, shorts. So she had a few pajama outfits, uh, but she really liked wearing shorts and uh, baggy t-shirts. Okay. How about uh, her routine getting ready for school in the morning? What's that about? We'd wake up, the alarm would start ringing around 7.30, we'd snooze it up until 8 o'clock. Then she'd get up, um, she'd get dressed, and then she'd lay back down in bed while she would wait for me to make her breakfast. So she would, she's a breakfast eater? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she'd have breakfast, then she would start, you know, with... Brushing her hair, brushing her teeth, putting on makeup. At five, I would give her her ADHD medications for school. Is that every day or just school days? Um, so it sounds like you're heading out like 8.45 or 9? Yes. And it takes like, what did you say, 15, 20 minutes to get to school? Yes. And first bell's 9.38? 9.20. Something like that? 9.20, okay. yeah. So on Monday the 26th, 7.30 seems like a really early time to depart to go to middle school, even if you're getting Mickey D's. What was the discussion about when Stefan and Madeline were going to leave on the 26th? There wasn't one. So you didn't know anything about these plans, or did you? Or I knew that they were going to go to McDonald's, but not 7 o'clock in the morning. That wasn't... Okay. I had assumed like 8 o'clock. Um, but even then, 8 o'clock is kind of early, like 8, 8.30, because you could just go to McDonald's, be done by 9, and then drop her off at school. But the McDonald's is right the block away from the school. So I Madeline's not driving, so she can eat while she's riding. Yeah. So I don't and she takes about an hour to get ready in the morning? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. So if they were leaving at 7.30, you'd, you'd think she'd have to get up at 6.30 to get ready and go through a routine, right? Yeah, that's extremely early. Okay. And is that what Stefan told you? after this, these events unfolded was that he, they left at early, like 7.30? What did he ever tell you? It was early, I can't remember the time. I think I dropped her off in front of her school sometime between 8.15 and 8.45. You say I, what do you mean by that? Did you drop her off that no, morning? No, I'm speaking, sorry. I'm, okay. Uh, as was Stefan was telling me. Stefan let me know that he dropped her off sometime between 8.15 and 8.45 uh, on the road by the church close to her school. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking him, why so early? That's too early. School doesn't start until 9.30. Why did you drop her off that early? Oh, I don't know. We just left the house and made good time. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Okay. Did... Madeline ever have like effects from taking the hydroxyzine in the morning? Like still be kind of sluggish? 
Yes. How often would that occur? Was that like every morning or not every morning? Not every morning. Um, if we happen to give her her medication later than normal and routine, that would happen. But. Um, okay. And were there ever any instances where she had taken too much of the medicine? Perhaps you and Stefan had given her medicine, not knowing that the other person had? Yes, that's happened once. How before? Just once or more? I want to say once. Okay. Um, were you taking medicinal marijuana in pill form at any point, or THC? Yes. And what do those pills or tablets or capsules look like? They're purple capsules. Did you ever suspect or confront Stefan about um, giving those medications to Madeline? No. So d during this incident where um, Madeline had been double dosed with hydroxyzine, do you recall any conversation you had with Stefan and inquiring as to whether or not he had accidentally given her any of your THC? That hadn't occurred to me. I, I had asked him the day that the one morning Maddie wouldn't wake up and, and get ready for school and she was just out of it. I thought it was, I assumed it was medication related. Okay. But I didn't realize, I'm like, did this one medication hit her too hard because we gave it to her late? I called poison control. Mm -hmm. I needed to see what would happen. Because at this point, I think I had gotten Stefan to admit that he gave her a second dose of the sleeping meds as well because he thought I had given it to her in the first place. Okay. Um, but that was with hydroxyzine. I didn't know anything about THC, the marijuana. I'm just asking you. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm asking if you remember having that conversation. There is a conversation on your phone about you, you were relaying that Madeline said that she suspected that it was different, bigger pills, and you relayed that to Stefan and had a conversation with him. And if you don't remember it because it was a year ago, that's fine. Um, my next question is, um, you have two female roommates? Yes. And one of them has a child, a son, that sleeps part-time over there? Yes. And so my understanding is they're kind of, it's like a, I don't know what to call it, like a bed and breakfast? There's numbers on the doors upstairs? <laughs> I don't know. I just, to make it easier for the roommates, I just labeled each bedroom. So they're in two and three? Mm, yes. All right. Now, bedroom number four. At one point, you told the police that your sister was staying with you, and that's why um, the sleeping arrangements were as they were. Was your sister ever staying with you, or did I misunderstand what you said? No, my sister wasn't staying with me. Okay. Um. So let me uh, ask you this. Um, at what point did Madeline's bedroom kind of become the living room? When did that setup start? Uh, I think as soon as a few months into us moving back into that ho townhouse. Um, and when would that have been? Let's say June of sometime in 2022, but I'm not sure when. Okay. It's my understanding that it's December of 2022 that you and Stefan kind of break up. Yes. But he still remains in the townhome. Yes. Why is that? So even though you're we broken up, I still considered him one of my best friends. Um, I wanted to give him the opportunity to live there, and he, he had just uh, he had gotten a job at Disney that was doing well. Okay. And I didn't want him to continue to lose that because he had been struggling for a long time to get a job or do anything with his own mental health issues. Okay. So I just wanted to give him a chance to like do something, be be something. So um, did he pay rent? Yes. How much rent did he pay? Uh, Six hundred bucks a month. All right. Sorry. Here. No footsies.
Um, <laughs> like wallet. So in December of 2022, kind of when the breakup happens, prior to that, what were the sleeping arrangements in your home? Was he sleeping in your bedroom as a couple? Yes. So who's in bedroom number four, uh, if anybody? I think that room remained empty for a while. For a little bit, there was another roommate there, but uh, it remained empty for the most part. Um, and were your female roommates already there in two and three? Yes. Why doesn't Madeline have that bedroom four? I wanted her to have bedroom four, but my dad really wanted rent. Um, that, that whole unit that I live in is owned by my father. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you pay your father anything to live there, or does he just handle the collecting the rent from your rentees, yeah, lessees, no. whatever they are? Uh, I, I pay him rent as well. Okay. What, what, what do you pay for the rent? My portion of the rent was $400 a month. All right. And what do the two female roommates pay? Prior to Madeline um, having her own bedroom set up in the living room, where was she sleeping in that townhome? Uh, in in my bed with me. Okay. And this is during a time frame when you were together with Stefan. So, is it the three of you every night? Well, we when we had first moved in, it was just me and Maddie. So it was just me and her on the bed. Then I think we eventually got her her own bedroom. Um, Stefan moves in eventually, and then, yeah, at that, at that point, it does become the three of us on the bed. Okay. So Madeline's 12, and she has her own bedroom. And how often is she sleeping in her own bed alone? Hardly. She doesn't like sleeping alone. And she doesn't like the living room. It's too big, too quiet. She says it'd be too dark, and then there would be spiders. She would see spiders, so... Um, so you say hardly. Were there ever nights where she just slept alone in her bed? Or was it 100%? Because there's a difference between hardly ever and 100% to me. If she ever slept on that bed, it was like once. Okay. All right. So now you've broken up with Stefan in December of 2022, right? Mm -hmm. Um. He's still paying rent. And he's there full time in bedroom number four. Is that where he goes after you break up? No, he stayed in my room for a few months. Um, we had broken up, but we weren't sure how to discuss the, discuss it with Maddie because it was the beginning. It was the middle of the school year, and I didn't want to affect her in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just played it off, um, acted like everything was normal and fine for the first six months. And then eventually she caught on, and then once she did, we admitted to her that we were broken up. And then, um, yeah, at that point is when he moved up to bedroom four. Okay. And once he moved up to bedroom four, were there instances where Madeline would sleep alone upstairs with him? I'm going to say... I want you to think carefully before you answer because obviously we've gone through your phone and we've seen all the conversations that you've had with Stefan, so it's clear that that's occurring, so I'm giving you the chance to answer the question. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how many times it's happened. Okay. Why are you allowing that to occur? I saw Stefan as someone that I completely trusted with my life, my child's life. Um, I thought he had cared for her as a father would. He had been in her life for more than half of it, playing the father role. Um, I thought he cared for her the way I did. I, Now, does there come a point in time in 2023 where you've kind of had enough of roommate ex-boyfriend Stefan and ask him to hit the road? Yes. And we'll, is that fair to say it was like October? Yeah, 
maybe yeah, like the end of October, because then then I gave him all of November and told him he had to be out by December first, kind of thing. But yeah, that sounds about right. And then did you kind of ask him to leave a month earlier, and it was a source of arguments? Uh, yes. Okay. So now at this point in time, when he's being asked to leave, have you had any conversation with Maddie that? Mommy isn't together with Stefan anymore, and this is kind of the ways of the world. Do you have that conversation with her? Uh, she had, by June, um, she figured it out already, so she knew we weren't together or anything like that. Um, so she, by December, yes, yeah, she had already known he was leaving, and okay. but that was okay. Why is he coming back to visit after he's out? We're still friendly with each other at this point. Christmas is coming up. And we wanted to spend Christmas together. So he comes up for a few days during Christmas. And then he does visit a few more times after that, but for the day. And it's to pick up packages. He keeps getting mail delivered to my house, packages. So he just comes up and picks them up. And when he comes to visit after he's been kind of kicked out, is he paying rent or how is this working or is he just coming to visit? He's just coming to visit. Is your father making any uh, arrangements to rent bedroom number four? Because this is his income that he's losing. Uh, yeah, we had had it, we, we had had like an ad. Um, posted to see if we can get any renters uh, so we were trying to rent it out but then we had to stop and what happens if you ended up renting room number four is Stefan gonna still come up and visit you and sleep in your bed I don't know I hadn't even thought of it at that point at one point you told investigators that Stefan was quote unquote stuck down there until they could afford for him to come back were there plans for him to come back we had discussed him coming back and living with me. We weren't sure if temporarily or like for me to help him out with the place for a little bit before he can find his own place and move out. Or we were also considering talking about living together as like a companionship. Um, it was my best friend who's helping me out with my child. Because you, you told investigators that a lot of the reason your re relationship fizzled off with St Stefan was that your antidepressants. You, you had moved on to other people, had you not? Yes. And so despite having moved on with other people, you were still having Stefan come up and visit and there were plans to cohabitate with him again, potentially. Possibly, yes. Maddie had the opportunity to go visit her biological father in the fall out in Texas. Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do you remember texting the biological father, hope nobody touches Maddie or tries shit or films her under the bathroom? Do you remember sending that text? No. Orange County Sheriff's Office back in February? Because that seems like a very oddly specific thing to text the father. So you didn't know anything about what was going on filming underneath bathroom doors? No idea. I don't know why I would have texted that. Okay. June 16th of last year, about 9.30 p.m. Oh, actually, I, I can't actually think back to that. Okay. What? Um, I think around the time that Maddie was going to fly out to Houston, mm -hmm. there had been an airline person that had gone into the bathroom and placed their camera on the toilet mm -hmm. to film. Um, and I remember thinking, I don't want Maddie, I'm afraid of Maddie being alone on the plane because what if an attendant does that to her? I said, hold on, let me fix something in the bathroom. And in reality, they're setting up a camera because this did happen to a girl. Okay. So um, I want to say it may have been concerns over that. Okay. Now, June 16th of last year at 9.30 p.m. and 27 seconds, you texted Stefan this. Maddie's no longer sleeping with me. I can't risk it. What does that mean? I have no idea. 
How often was Maddie sleeping with you? Often, all the time. Uh, well, you keep on saying often versus all the time. Was it a hundred percent of the time or not a hundred percent of the time? If she wasn't, if she wasn't with my mom and she was with me, then yeah, she was sleeping with me. Okay. And if she's at mom, she's one hundred percent of the time sleeping with mom. With Your mom? mom, with my mom, or she does have her own room, I guess. Like, a, a, there's another spare room she could use, but for for the most part, she prefers to sleep with my mom. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is that you had some sort of period tracker that you kept track of Madeline's period with? I had a calendar app that calendar I would write. App. I would write what days she would get her period, yeah. And obviously, Madeline doesn't have a job, so she's not going out and buying the products that she would need if she had her period, right? Mm -hmm. You would have to do that for her? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So, do you remember her using any of those products um, at all in February? Because I assume... You take the trash out, or does she take the trash out, or how does all this work? I take the trash out. Um, in February, no, I didn't notice her using any of her feminine hygiene products. Did you have any conversations with her about that? Uh, no, but I didn't notice until after everything. Because like, it would have been due like at the beginning of February, and this all happens at the end of February, so she's almost due again in March. So you never had any conversations with her about not having her period at the beginning of February? No, there have been, she's had other periods that have been missed or like super late, so I just assumed this was going to be one of those situations again. Okay. Um, but no, I didn't. Um, did you ever discuss her periods or lack of periods with Stefan? I don't think so. Um, it's my understanding that Maddie had to take Miralax. I'm familiar with that myself because of my daughter when she was little. Um, so she had constipation issues? Yeah. Would it ever cause her a discomfort, physical pain, bleeding? Um, yes. And how are you aware of that? Uh, she would tell me. Uh, there have been moments so we've gone to we've gone to doctor's appointments. They've run a lot of tests on her. They told me why her body is doing what it's doing, but um, she's shown me like she's shown me like uh, if there was blood or if she's in the bathroom and she just can't go like it's stuck. <laughs> mm -hmm. She showed me that too. So did she ever specifically seek treatment for tears or bleeding or anything due to her bowel movements? No, I don't think so. Or anything like that? No. Okay. I don't think there was ever a, a tear. Okay. On February 26th, the whole purpose of Stefan coming and taking Madeline to school was so that you could get some sleep. You had missed your medication Saturday night, so on and so forth, right? Yes. Is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't have driven your car to take Madeline to school and therefore not embarrass her and he could just drop her off normally? Yes, but. Um because he's not on my car insurance, I was very nervous to let him drive my car. You did let him drive your car after this occurred though, right? Yes, but he was very insistent because he wanted to go look for Maddie and he had a, a spare on his car because he had a flat, so he couldn't drive his car. So he just really wanted to go out. So I just let him, but I wasn't comfortable with it. During your previous interviews, and you did it once today, you kind of interchanged I, we, or Stefan dropping Madeline off at school. Did you see Madeline at all on February 26th of 2024, that Monday? No. Do you know anything about how she died? No. Did, did Stefan tell you anything about how she died? No. Did Stefan tell you about his plans to go back down to Northport in your car that Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Got any questions, Mark? Mm -hmm. I'm we're getting close. <clears throat> I'm going to jump through because I'm making notes as we're going on. So, how frequently did Stefan come up here after he moved back to Northport? I'm going to say. How many he, times total do you think he came back here? Two to three times. Do you remember if those were around specific dates? One was like the week of Christmas. I can't 
remember when the other one was. It was Stefan in town the week or two prior to this last time he came. I don't remember. It's possible, but I don't remember. Everything is becoming a blur. Do you remember sending him a text message asking if he can babysit Maddie while you go have lunch with your friend? This was a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember going out a, a few weeks before. I don't remember asking him to babysit. But I don't know where he was. Did you ever go to lunch with your friend? And I, he babysat her? I, I did go to lunch with my friend, but I don't think he was, I don't think he was here. I think Maddie stayed home alone for a few hours. Okay. When you mentioned Maddie caught on about you guys being broke up, how did that happen? What, like, what did she say or? I forgot, we were, me and Stefan were having a conversation. And she goes, are you guys broken up? And we kind of looked at her and we're like, why do you ask? She goes, because you guys are kind of acting like you're broken up. You guys haven't hugged and kissed in a long time. <laughs> and we're like, okay. So we just kind of How do you think she felt about that? Fine. She didn't act sad or, or happy or anything. We are just like, whatever. All right. Now, you mentioned, and you mentioned to me before, too, that you found her phone on her dresser in, like, her little bedroom area. Does she have a specific spot where she plugs in her phone to try? How does she charge her phone? Um, so, on her side of my bed, um, she's got a, a long charger. She'll connect it there to charge. Um don't know how she charged it that night though don't know if she took her charger and moved it to the room upstairs not sure how do you charge your phone i charge my phone with my charger next to me on my side of the bed okay is it one that you plug in or it's a magnetic one okay um now it when you go to bed at night is there any kind of routine that you do with your phone if you're texting look on tiktok or whatever and you go to go to bed you just set your phone down and go to sleep or uh, what's that routine like i'll tiktok until i start dozing off and then i'll put my phone on the charger make sure my alarm's on and then um yeah just lay down close my eyes and hope not to think of too much just fall asleep okay that night saturday or sunday night when you guys, when spending this half hour of time together, was all you that you were doing was talking about gifts and counting her money, or were you guys doing anything else? Just asking her for more details about the party and to tell me like what I missed. But she seemed like she had a really good time. When you got home from work that day, where were where was everybody? I think everyone was in my room, hanging out in my room. Okay. Everybody meaning... Uh, Maddie and, and Stefan were there. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, now, it's obvious that you and Stefan communicate via text message and phone calls and stuff like that. What is Google Meet? What is Google Meet? Mm -hmm. That is like Google's version of FaceTime. So just face chatting. Okay. Uh, video chatting. Okay. Um... When the birthday party, when her birthday party was planned, was this planned before you got your job or after? The birthday party? Mm -hmm. mm, I think it was planned before. Because once I saw my schedule and I saw that I, it was during a training day and I, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to call out. I considered re, rescheduling the party, but my family was insistent to just keep it that day. And I said, okay. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> Stefan moves out of his room, and I think he mentioned that your dad had plans on renting that room again to somebody else. Is that right? Yeah. How was that room set up? How was Stefan's room set up after he moved out? 
pretty much the Besser, same. Uh, pretty much the same. The bed was in the same location. The okay. TV, uh, the TV, the dresser, the desk, and the mini fridge. Everything stayed in the same location. Okay. Was the bed and did it have comforter, blankets, and all that stuff on it, or? Uh, when he moved out, everything was empty. There was a mattress protector cover on it. Mm-hmm. Um. But I had clean sheets and clean bank blankets to put on, like they're available. So where were they available? In the closet. Okay. Um, and I, I did. Yeah. I let him know they were there. Do, do you know if he made the bed? I don't know. But I'm going to assume he. I don't know. What did the blankets look like? that would be used to make that bed? They would be white, white cotton um, linen sheets with, they're white, but they're white stripes, different Mm -hmm. shades of white. So Mm -hmm. white stripes going down it. Um, That was a fitted fitted cover, then a sheet, and then the pillowcases. And it should have been like a warm blanket in the, closet somewhere the same color white or Maybe gray okay when you say there's pillowcases how many pillows were on the bed i'm not sure i know that we had taken things out of that room before i don't know if we used those pillows i'm not sure what pillows were up there okay did you ever go into the room after you discovered that she was missing, did you go up upstairs to that bedroom? No. Okay. So when you go to sleep in your room, and you're either with Maddie or without Maddie or with Stefan, is your door open, closed, lights on, lights off? When I go to sleep? Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a cat. I can't shut the door. I have to leave it cracked. Mm-hmm. So it stays cracked um, with a little, like a little, like a door stopper mm-hmm. behind it so it doesn't open all the way because my cat will just knock it up over. Um, yeah, but we sleep with the door cracked. Okay, lights on, lights off? Uh, lights off with a YouTube video playing in the background making, playing rain sounds. Okay, with that... Would the screen be illuminated, or is it something where a screen, like a phone, where the screen goes black and it still plays? It goes black, yeah. And it's still black. Okay. Still um, do you remember it happened that night if you were doing listening to those YouTube videos, or probably was. I listen to it every night, so I probably was. Does it shut off automatically? Um, around like four or five a.m., but then I'll. I'll notice and I'll press play again. Okay. Is it fair to say that you're easily woken up or no? By it sounds like that or? I'm not sure I'm easily woken up. I don't know. Okay. Now, this purpose of you telling or having Maddie sleep with Stefan upstairs is because you told me before that you needed a good night's sleep. If you needed this kind of sleep previously to when Stefan wasn't there, what would happen? You mean if Stefan wasn't there and I needed this good night's sleep? Mm-hmm. Um, it depends. Um, if I had missed my meds the way I missed them, at night and I wasn't feeling or I was feeling just how I was feeling I'm not sure if I would have had her sleep it is have her sleep with me on the other side of the bed or if I would have sent her upstairs to the guest room but um she sleeps like a monkey she sleeps she rolls she'll 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 start on one end of the bed and end up on top of me by the end of the night and she's a gymnast I guess but um have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep? No. Not like not 
for any of these reasons. Have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep by herself? Oh, mm -hmm. no. Okay. I'm going to need to wrap this up. Okay, one more question. Um, does anybody use your phone other than you? Uh, no, except for the day that we were sitting in front of my house and um, forensics was in the house. That was the only time I've ever, ever let anyone use my phone, and that was Stefan. Stefan had my phone. What about, do you wear an Apple Watch? Yes. Does it track any of your movements or anything like that that you know of? Do you sleep with your watch on? No. I hardly ever put it on, honestly. Okay. All right. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything real quick, Danielle? No. Do you have anything that you think we should know, Matt? Matthews? Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Good down there? Yeah, I'm good. All right. It's 10.06 a.m. We will conclude this investigative scene interview with uh, Eunice Soto. Thank you. I'm sorry.